tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software $100 and starting pricing for high-end software $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Boom. There it is. All right, what's going on, man? I'm here. All right, what's going on, man? I am here. Ready to do what we supposed to do. All right? What's going on with y'all, man? All right, let me get everything together over here in my little space, in my little station over here. How y'all doing, man? We're here making it do what it do, ladies and gentlemen. Making it do what it do. How are you this lovely evening? I hope everybody had a great weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, let me get in the chat room and see what's going on. A lot of stuff we're going to discuss tonight. A lot of stuff we're going to discuss tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I need everybody to hit that like button. Then hit that subscribe button. Let everybody know that we're in here. Um, retweet this. Put this on your Twitter feed, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody retweet this and put it on your Twitter speed. Um, Twitter feed, I'm sorry. All right? Put this on your Twitter feed to let everybody know that we're live. Retweet this now. That would be wonderful family. Before we get started, don't forget, man, we have sold out of the root work deodorant. We will have more in a few weeks, so you guys hang tight. People are really loving the root work deodorant. So you guys hang tight. We will have more popping real soon, ladies and gentlemen. We will have more root work popping soon. So y'all stay tuned. You guys stay tuned. Um, a lot of stuff we're gonna touch on tonight. I'm just waiting on everybody to get in here. There's so many things that we gotta hit, so much going on. I haven't um I didn't do my regular live broadcast this week. We've been so busy um, working on this new hip hop documentary. The title is Tight Lip right now. We're keeping very tight lips about the title, but that will be announced soon. We are going to have um, the trailer come out in a couple of weeks. The first look trailer that's when we're going to make the announcement of what the, the name of the film is and all that stuff. So that's going to be coming pretty soon. So you guys need to stay tuned for that. This is the most important hip hop documentary that's ever been made. And it's very important that we take control of the narrative because they're trying to rustle away the culture from us. Um, there's a big corporate drive for hip hop now and you know whenever they do a corporate drive when they're about to really really make something extremely mainstream they have to omit us from it so we got to understand the severity of us preserving our culture and getting the truth out there because they are just throwing so many lies out there it is ridiculous the lies are just getting ridiculous and shout out to shout out to Black Voltron Reloaded. Shout out to Black Voltron in the town up there in Oakland. 
But family, this documentary cannot have come at a better time. Uh, that's why I have been working like crazy. We're doing the edits to get this film out to you, family. And you guys, we're going to give you an opportunity to get involved. I'll keep you guys posted on that because a lot of people like, how can we get involved? I will announce that too. <clears throat> I will announce that too. You will be able to get involved. We want the family. We want your energy, your name, your spirit. This is a collaborative effort. We want the family involved with this. And family, this is something that it has to be all hands on deck. This film is very important because we're gonna, you're going to have to have the ammo to shut down the lies. We're going to have to constantly shut these lies down. And this film is going to give you all the ammo you need to shut all the lies down. All right? Yeah, the, the Kamala Harris, the, the Tether two-step event, I know about it. Right now, the Kamala Harris and those guys, not only are they using that to pander t for votes, they, they tried to have a hip-hop party, house party, at Kamala Harris's house. Lord. So Kamala Harris tried to sp spruce it up with the dress code a little bit. They had rappers performing at her spot. Whenever voting time comes around, that's when she gets to doing her little dances. All of a sudden, she starts blacking it up. She gets some collard greens and she goes down to Rainbow Fashion Over and get her little outfit. And boy, it was so many things about her little shindig. Forget about the speech she made where she was trying to all lives matter hip hop. Didn't mention black Americans at all. She was all live mattering hip hop and that's what we've been telling people. Oh yeah, my McDowell shirt, shout out to McDowell's. We've been telling people the name of the game was to just take us foundational black Americans completely out of hip hop. Like we had nothing to do with it. Because this whole thing, if you tell one lie and nobody checks you, why not just go all the way with the lie? If you start, the lie starts small. The lie starts with, yeah, blacks and Jamaicans, blacks and Caribbeans started hip hop. No, no, let's, let's go before that. When hip hop was first starting, they were like, well, a Caribbean helped start hip hop. Then the lie changed to Caribbeans, plural, influence hip hop. Then the lie, nobody checked them, then the lie was like, yeah, the black Americans got the sound system from Jamaican culture. They throw a lie out there and just kind of wait and see, look around, Ooh, nobody said nothing, nobody checked us. Um, well, if you like that lie, the black Americans got rapping from Jamaican toasting. And then you look around, Ooh, nobody took our head off, whoa, whoa, shit, well, we on a roll. Then they start saying that Coke Rock is an immigrant and he's Jamaican and then Caribbeans and blacks started hip hop. We let that lie go on and then, you know what, let's let's double down. Let's, let's Trojan horse some other folks. Blacks and Latinos created hip hop. You let that lie sit out there. Nobody checks it. Then, when the coast is really clear, blacks and Latinos started it 50-50. Then you run and hide. Now, there was some pushback from that. Now, there was some pushback. Puerto, somebody said Puerto Rican created breakdancing. Please. Yeah, then they'll say that. Then they start talking about all the breakdancing the Puerto Ricans created. But with the 50-50 lie, they got a little pushback on that one. Hey, everybody, oh, whoa, oh, hey. You know? But now, now they're like, they saw the pushback. They're like, uh-oh, we got we to gotta really double down now. Or we got to double down. 
Because then, with that 50-50 line, then you have some Puerto Ricans talking about, well, y'all got some of the moves from us. Y'all got some of the b-boying from Puerto Ricans. You see? If you let one lie go on, then they'll just start going on and on with the lie. Then they start minimizing us. We start hearing corporate news reports talking about, yeah, well, hip-hop was created from um, Afro-Caribbean, Latino, and African-American culture. They'll make us last. Remember when um, one of them um, mainstream publications put out something earlier a few months ago talking about Caribbeans, Latinos, and the black Americans. They kind of threw us in there last, you see? Then, remember about two or three weeks ago, I put up the article, they're like, well, you know, there was an LGBT influence on hip hop too. You know they were kind of dressing like the village people. You see, now it's going all to hell. Now they're just going crazy with it. Then they start talking about, well, you know, in the Bronx, in New York in the 70s, the black folks was watching karate movies and they were eating at the Asian store, so it's really a lot of Asian influences on hip hop that we ain't talking about too now. Then they start just throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks at this point. They're just throwing it all out there. And now it gets to the point where when Kamala Harris did her little speech, they didn't mention us at all. Well, yeah, hip hop is so great as American's culture. It came from um, African culture, um, Caribbean and Latino beats. And we just don't exist no more. This is why it's important for us to take control of the narrative family. It's gonna to have to come from the grassroots because hip hop, has, it was a grassroots effort when it started. The, the maintenance of it has to be grassroots. The maintenance of it, the gatekeeping of it has to be great. Yes, dude, they've been talking about some damn Bruce Lee movies and Kung Fu movies influence hip hop. So we are clearing this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna stop the lies and they know, people know that this film is coming. Family, people know this film is coming and like I said, they're trying to get in front of it. They're trying to jump in there saying, oh, Tariq, you're trying to be divisive. Oh, Tariq, you're being so divisive. Why are you putting this movie out? Well, can we all just get along? Why are you going to put this movie out? Because they know we're going to destroy all the lies. They know this. They know this. And what makes you think we should just let y'all sit up here and lie indefinitely? What, what kind of nonsense is that? We're not going to sit up here and just let you lie indefinitely. Yes, we talk about Grandmaster Flowers. And look, this film, we got everybody in it. We got almost all the pioneers in it. We got almost all the pioneers. We got a lot of people who are not really emphasized. We got all the pioneers in it. Some people were saying, well, do you have Bam, Flash, Herc? We reached out to Herc, to Herc's people, and you know, the, the general consensus is, you know, everybody in the Bronx like, Herc don't really do interviews like that. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of hard to get Herc, which it is, but we've reached out to Herc's people, we, we've offered. Herc don't really do interviews like that. If you notice, y'all notice that? Herc doesn't do a lot of interviews. Herc does not do a lot of interviews. All right? No disrespect to Herc. No disrespect. And we're not disrespecting Herc in the movie. We're, we're really bringing a lot of truth to power. We're not disrespecting anybody, but we're telling the truth. But Herc generally doesn't do a lot of interviews. Now, but the thing is with Herc, there's a lot of things that's put out there. And... Herc just kind of keeps quiet and doesn't go out here and publicly challenge a lot of that stuff. You know, but Herc doesn't do a lot of interviews. Um, but yeah, there was a dude around this, like a little bit before Herc, Grandmaster Flowers. That's where Grandmaster Flash got his name from, Grandmaster Flowers. And a lot of those early D DJs were kind of dismissed as disco DJs 
because they didn't primarily focus on the brakes. Some of them did brakes, but they didn't primarily focus on it. But they were influenced by a lot of those early DJs. Pete DJ Jones, um, there was another brother, Smokey, who was around. We talked about all this in the movie. Uh, this is the quintessential hip hop documentary. This is the real deal. None of that fluff stuff. And again, we reached out to her. Um, the, the people that they normally prop up, Herc, Bambada, and Flash, they're not in it. Herc isn't in it because Herc just really doesn't do interviews. Um, Bambada is not in it, kind of for obvious reasons. If you notice with Bambada, this is the 50th anniversary of hip-hop. You haven't seen a lot of Bambada because a lot of people are kind of eh, distancing themselves from Bambada because of, you know, those, you know, that situation that, that was exposed with him. So a lot of people are distancing themselves from Bambada. If we're gonna be real, um, I did speak with Grandmaster Flash. Me and Grandmaster Flash had a phone call. Flash, cool guy, and Flash was down to be in it. The scheduling, Flash is his scheduling is insane. You know, Flash is a very in-demand DJ still. Flash is a phenomenal DJ. So Flash. You know, we, I talked to him, then I got with his people. Real good folks. They're very cooperative. Um, but his schedule is insane. He would not have been able to do it until like mid-October. We're going to be done. We're already pretty much done with the movie. We're just editing now. So we just can't really stall the movie out to wait on my brother. All right. But Flash is cool. Flash was down. You know? But just the scheduling, we couldn't get Flash in there. But we got everybody else. You name a pioneer, we got them. We got everybody else. All right. We got it. Now this is one. This is one feature documentary film. It's a feature film. Yeah. So, you know, we got um, the original B Boys, Trixie and Sasa. We got um, Grandmaster Cass, Melly Mel, Debbie D. Debbie D was spitting hot fire. Um, the first female MC, Sha Rock. Um, Charlie Rock, one of the original B Boys from the Zulus. Uh, God, we got so many people, man. Uh, DJ Red Alert, shout out to Red Alert. Red Alert was there early on. Red Alert has been in radio for like, shit, 40 years, hip hop radio for 40 years. So we got Red Alert dropping. Hot Fire, I say Busy B. We got Chief Rocker Busy B in it. Oh, man. So many phenomenal people, man. Cochla Rock. We got Cochla Rock, the first MC. First hip-hop MC, he's in it. DJ Hollywood. People forget about Hollywood. DJ Hollywood, very, very instrumental in early hip-hop. People kind of dismiss Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood was the guy. Mid-70s, Hollywood was the guy. See, we're focusing on the 70s because that's one thing that a lot of people don't do. They don't really focus on the 70s. They start, they'll start. they talk about the 70s for a quick minute and then start talking about the 80s and 90s and all of that. That's why um, you know, people were like, get the Wu-Tang Clan and get this and that. No. Because that would kind of be out of context. I, I got some modern rappers from the Bronx, but they were giving their perspective on what they saw growing up in the Bronx. Like um, Lord Jamar's in it. Lord Jamar kind of grew up in the Bronx, and so he was around all of that stuff. And um, he he really broke the game down heavy. Uh, we got Cornbread, the original, um, the first modern graffiti artist to break down his story. We got everybody. In. This has never been done before. Yeah? Yep, Club 371 in the Bronx. That was DJ Hollywood making it pop off. Yeah? So, yeah, we really tell the story of what went down in the 70s, in the real early days. Because people go out of their way to skip around. They'll start talking about the origins of hip-hop and then they'll start talking about the damn Rocksteady crew in the 80s. You see, they play these little Jedi mind tricks with the public. They're like, yeah, the beginning of hip-hop, and then they start having crazy legs and all these people. Them dudes came way later. And then, 
They start getting these people who came in the 80s. Yeah. But it's going to be a great film, man. This is going to be a classic for real, for real, man. This is going to be a huge film. So I, I really can't wait. And I'm, I'm working so hard to get it on out because, again, right now, they're just throwing all the lies at us, man. They're throwing the lies at us heavy. So we got to debunk those lies. Speaking of, Now, speaking of your girl Kamala Harris, um, like I said, she had a hip-hop party at her spot. Um, she went and put on this janky little outfit. Uh, where Where's this footage of her? Where's this footage? Hold on. Where's this footage of Kamami? Hold on. Let me find. I got so much stuff we got to talk about tonight. So this is y'all girl right here. This is Kamala. I don't know if I should play the music. I don't want a copyright strike. But this is Kamala. She's at her party. They made sure they surrounded her around black men so that y'all can um, pander for the black vote. They got to do some black vote pandering there. So here's Kamala. All right, let me turn the music down. So this is her up here trying to shake them little narrow hips. There she go. They made sure to surround her around a lot of black dudes to make it seem like she's down. All right. What the hell is she doing? All right. That's y'all girl, though. That's your girl, Kamami. All right. That's y'all girl. <laughs> Lord. Let me see. There's some other footage. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, let me let me show some of the other other footage. Hold on. Wait a minute. Here's some other angles. Here's some other angles. Um here's some other angles of Kamala. Hold on. I think um she, that's CeeLo Green. Is that CeeLo Green? Is that CeeLo Green meeting her right now? Is that oh no no, I'm sorry, I thought that was CeeLo Green. That's um Simone Sanders. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> I thought the goody mob was performing. But no, that was um, Simone Sanders, right? Okay, for, for, for a split second, I thought it was CeeLo, my bad. Okay, so that was Simone Sanders there. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, it, it, they're just doing the most. Yeah, they had to make Doug step off for a second. They made him step off for a minute. Um. So, y'all girl, Kamami, she's really pandering for them black votes, ladies and gentlemen. She's pandering heavy for the black vote. And she's out here, your girl is out here, family. Why is Kamala Harris dressed like Mr. Brown? She got on an outfit, she dressed just like Mr. Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Look, you can't tell me that that's not a Mr. Brown outfit. Hold on, that woman, that's a Mr. Brown outfit if I've ever seen one. Hold on. Same color patterns. So that's your girl. That's y'all home girl. That's your, that's your girl. All right? So that's them thinking that's gonna, they're going to work their way into the black boat. So God bless them. Bless her heart. Anyway, what else? A lot of other stuff is going on out here. Um, I, we got to talk about the main topic. We're talking about the feminist finesse. Family, did we get a feminism finesse? Um, now, all last week, everybody was talking about this Somali chick who got on camera at some little hole-in-the-wall club talking about some dude hit her in the face with a brick because she didn't want to give the guy her number. She said if the guy hit her with a brick, then all of a sudden there was a bunch of think pieces and talk pieces on how black men ain't shit and how we don't protect the black woman. And all oh, it was a whole thing where they were dumping on us. They were trying to drag foundational black American men in this nonsense and we had nothing to do with it. Now family, people are, let me, let me just give you a refresher for those who don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let me give you a refresher. This is the woman here. Now look at the details here. Now the details are very important. All right, this woman is in the club. Hold on. Hold on. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? 
So this woman is in a club. All right, she's in a club, and then this is her with the mask on. All right, all right, she goes outside. All right, she's inside. Yo, this man just hit me in my face with a brick, and all these black men just watch, and they don't give a fuck. What kind of brick is? Yeah, this, man, this man. And the guy was like, "What kind of brick is it?" And he hit me, you fucking wood, grabbed a rock, and he hit me in my fucking face because I would have given him my number. What kind of brick and is? And all y'all just fucking watch. What do you want? You don't see that shit? What do you want? You don't see that shit? Guys, what do you want us to do? Okay, so now family, all right, and then she was in the hospital crying about, oh, what, oh, I got hit with a brick, I got hit with a brick, oh my God. Now, she put up a GoFundMe, got like $40,000, come to find out she did the same thing in 2020. 2020, same thing. Now, this is a video of the same woman in the year 2020, all right? She had another GoFundMe. This is in the year 2020, look. You grew up, and they mad because you trying to be somebody. They mad because you trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor, and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They don't beat me up. I'm 30 years old, they don't beat me up. Grew up, that's niggas trying to beat me up. Well, niggas try to beat me up for no reason. Look at me. I'm not a bad person. Y'all know that. Y'all know I'm a good person. And they try to do this to me. Okay. So this tether, here's the deal. A lot of people are doing investigating, family. A lot of people are investigating. First of all, people were questioning if somebody hit you with a brick, Where's the blood? I mean, your, your shit just wouldn't swell up like that. You would, there would be some kind of blood. Somebody would knock you out if you got hit with a brick like that. All right? Somebody would knock you out. People were, were kind of saying, what the hell is going on? So then people were like, well, oh, why, am I, why am I so big? Hold on, my bad. Hold on, guys. Then people were like, hold on, excuse me, guys, my they were asking, like, let me get my, my camera shit together. I'm looking weird here. Let me get myself together. So then they were asking, okay, if somebody hit you with a brick, yeah, I, I zoomed out. I, I was, it, was, it was janky for a minute. They were like, well, if somebody hit you with a brick, well, damn, why didn't you file a police report? Because she didn't file a police report at the time. And people were like, what the hell? Why didn't you file a police report if somebody bust you in the head with a brick? And then you out here doing a live, somebody hit you with a brick, and the first thing you do is start doing a selfie. Yeah, you would have scraped skin or whatever. So people are like kind of digging into the situation. One dude said he called, it was a clinic she went to, and they said that she put some kind of, allegedly, some kind of saline injection in her face to make her face look like it was swollen. Then she went to the clinic to get the saline taken out. Remember in the video, she just said, I'm trying to be a doctor. So she knows the medical field. So she put allegedly some type of saline in her face to make it look like she got hit. Let's go back to the first video. There's a reason why she's in the club with a mask on, okay? Why is she in a club covering her face? This was before she went outside talking about I got hit with a brick. So right here, she already had the saline solution allegedly in her face that she was covering up so she goes outside takes off the mask and starts making these false accusations oh god these niggas just watch me get hit with a brick the black man ain't shit um check out my gofundme does this look like a finesse family this looks like a finesse family huh and you guys wonder why these scamming tethers like that, not all of my non-FBA people, not all of you, but there's a reason why we were delineating from some of this tether scamming nonsense. You feel me? We don't y'all don't understand the level of scamming some of these folks will do, man. And it's working. This woman got a nice bag. And this woman pulls off the scam. We get demonized. 
You dig? She gets a bag and she's sitting off in the corner somewhere doing the bird man hand rub. You dig? Then people like, why are you niggas divisive? That's why. That's why we don't want to be a part of that scamming tether class. Eh? Yeah, somebody said they checked with the, the, the venue owner. The venue looked at the security cameras. They didn't see nobody get hit with no brick. Allegedly, I'm saying allegedly. But yeah, there was a reason why if somebody hit you with a brick, why don't you get on the phone with the police and say, hey, damn, a nigga just hit me with a brick. Come get him before he hit me again. You get hit with a brick and you get on live. Hey, guys, I just got hit by a brick by some guy over there. Come on, man. Yeah, she's she done ran off with the bag. Yeah, she needs to be charged for some shit like that. So, yeah, people were calling down to Houston. They were calling down to the police department. Remember, people were calling my live, and they were like, the police, they don't know nothing about, no, nobody reported anything. And the police, they're, they're trying to see what's going on, but the police, they, got, they didn't get no reports. Yeah? Right. Somebody would have had footage of it. Yeah? And then folks want to sit up here talking about protect these women. Man, these damn scammers. Man, we got to stay away from the, the scammy class. Yeah, she raised 20K on GoFundMe a couple of years ago. We don't understand the level of scamming with these folks, man. But she did a feminism finesse. You then. This is why folks who come around our culture, or come around us, they try to demonize us while they get a damn bag. They know that demonizing us, making it seem like the black community is doing something to them, you know, they know they can get some quickie support that way. Yeah? And speaking of the black community, did y'all see um, LA Times came up with this? A new poll finds that California voters resoundingly oppose cash reparations for slavery. Don't care. Do not care. All right. California voters oppose the idea of the state offering cash payments to the descendants of enslaved African Americans by a two to one margin. According to the results of a new poll. Man, I don't give a damn. They can poll all they want. We need our paper. And we need cash payments direct to us. All right, I don't want to hear no poll or whatever. Because here's the thing. When they sit up here and talk about how the white LGBT community and the trans community, they need to put their curriculums in our schools, they don't jump up here talking about the polling, because a lot of people disagree with that. There are people that was out here fighting against that, physically fighting against that. People were vehemently against that, and they put it through anyway. You know, so I don't want to hear about no polling. We need our cash. Because let me tell you something, the stuff they got in schools now, they got something out here now in schools in California. Now, I want y'all to hear this, and they always get some, some black person as the front person to deliver this nonsense, where they got something like, where they passed a bill where parents can lose custody of their children if you don't affirm their identity, their gender identity. Listen to this. This is what they got in schools now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That parents affirm their children. They have since the dawn of time. Typically, it happens when their um, gender identity expression matches their biological gender. But what happens is when it doesn't, that's when the affirmation starts to wane. And that's what we're dealing with here. Although it's called the TGI bill, they're not mentioned anywhere in the law. What's mentioned in the law is the child's gender identity and expression and the parent's affirmation of that, whatever it is. 
because that is our duty as parents to affirm our children. That parents affirm- Family, these people are sick. So now this is what's going on. So that's, yeah, yeah, this, they get some bald headed mammy in here. I don't, I wonder what her background is, by the way. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting strappy vibes. There might be a strap on there. But what they're going to do, are they, are they talking about taking your children away if you don't affirm their identity? Yeah, affirm. Mean, let, me, let me tell you what it means. So now, when your kid goes to school and then they put a teacher up here who's telling the, the kids about how to be non-binary and all of this stuff, confusing the kids and manipulating and grooming the kids, they gonna go up here and start putting teachers in the classroom to talk about, hi, my name is um, Teacher Jones. I'm not a Mr. or Mrs. You can call me they. This is why they start putting these people in schools, particularly black schools, all right? They, gonna send, they, they send them to the black schools first. They send these teachers in here talking about their non-binary, and the kids are like, what? Yes, kids, I'm, I'm what's called a non-binary gender fluid teacher. I neither identify with male or female, and that's okay. Um, you don't refer to me as ma'am or sir. You, re you refer to me as them and they. And the kids are like, huh? Huh? So the kid's already confused. Because just a kid in general going to school, you're already confused about shit anyway. So now they start grooming the kids saying, hey, I'm non-binary. And the kids are like, what, what's that? That means sometimes I feel like a girl. Sometimes I feel like a boy. Do you feel like that sometimes? Yeah, I guess sometimes. Yeah, so you're non-binary too. Really? Yeah, you're non-binary. So your kid goes home. Hey, mom. I'm part of the LGBT community. Like, what? The fuck are you talking about, boy? Yeah, mom. I'm non-binary. Like, boy, shut your ass up. And then you go to school. The kid goes to school and say, hey, I told my mom I was non-binary. She told me to shut the hell up. <gasps> she did what? Your mother didn't affirm your new gender identity? Let me call child services. That's where that's going, man. That's where that's going, dude. They're going to be grooming your kids at school and, and telling them all types of weird shit. And then when they go home and you say, hey, stop talking crazy, boy, a girl, then they're going to say you didn't affirm this identity that we didn't manipulated your child to agreeing to. You see? Let me give you an example. This is something right here. Look at this. Look at this. Y'all think I'm playing? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Look at this. Watch this. All right, they're gonna start sending these at your school right here. Hold on. Oh, my name is Teacher Roby. I am not binary. I use they them pronouns. For example, they are a great art teacher. They taught us how to draw a stitch. Many of you already know that about me. Pronouns are super important for myself, for you. It's important that we get it right every single time. If you ever make a mistake, I'll just politely correct you. And you should also be making sure that you use those correct pronouns. Um, if you have questions about that, we can talk about it offline, all right? Cool. Man, this is warfare. That's psychological damn warfare. You see? That's psychological warfare. And I told y'all years ago, they gave my, my, my oldest son some homework, and it was some, they were like, identify body parts. And it was a man, it was clearly a, a man who was basically nude. It was a cartoon man. Well, you could tell because it had man feet, but it had, it was anatomically correct. And you were supposed to write feet. And my son wrote the word feet and drew a dick on it. 
he drew a penis on the cartoon man. He drew a penis on it. And then the teacher hit me and my wife up. Like, hey, you know, no, not a problem. I just wanted to bring this to your attention. You know, TJ drew this. And she showed us the picture of the, the, the male character with my son who drew a penis on it. I said, what the hell is the problem? I don't see a problem. It's a dude. He know what a, what a dude is supposed to look like. And he drew, he drew a boy's body part on there. So what's the problem? Remember I told y'all that? They've been trying this little stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he drew a dick. So what? What? Call me when he starts drawing bussy. When he draws a bussy, then we're going to have to have a PTA meet. Call me then. But yeah, I'm fine with this. He knows what a boy is supposed to look like. Right? So yeah. Yeah, he saw something missing. And naturally, hey, that's a boy. That boy is missing something. I'm a boy. He's a boy. He needs to have what I got. Yeah. Kids are very honest. See, they got to try to reprogram our babies, man. These people are sick. Man. But yeah, we want cash payments. We don't want no programs. And my California people, don't let them run no reparations thing through a bullshit program. We're going to give a, 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 a grant for this kind of program, for a minority business program, for a racial justice program. Don't, don't, don't let them do that. That the game is rigged. We're going through that now. With us trying to get grants, them shits are so rigged. They rig them so that we don't get any of that grant money. That's a con game, con game, con game. Don't let them run that program stuff. We got to get direct cash payments specifically to foundational black Americans. We got to be very precise with this. We got to be super duper precise with this. That's why family, we need the family. If you everybody go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Everybody give a little donation, a recurring donation because they're doing all types of stuff to sabotage us. We can't get the grants that we're supposed to get because we don't have any LGBT people on our board of directors and they got a grading system where you it's damn near mandatory to have that in order to get any money in these racial justice programs. It, again, so we need the grassroots community to really support what we're doing. We got to we got to have some damn to the it's to the point where we got to have telethons for um, getting funds for the museum. We got to get, you know, that has to be supported because we are not getting any state or federal support whatsoever. It is rigged. It is completely rigged for us to not get anything from them. So we really got to get as much grassroots support as possible. So everybody here, we got 6,000 people here. Everybody just put a little something on it. Just some, something on it. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com and give a recurring payment and that will help us out a lot to keep everything going for this institution. You think? But, yeah, yeah, they got, look, whenever they start talking about, when we say, hey, what are y'all doing for the black community? Oh, no, we had a diversity program that we created. We had um, um, a Black Lives Matter justice program. We had this other um, art form incentive that we had that included people of color. That ain't for us, man. Yeah, I'm trying to see if we can start hitting, doing the lawsuit thing with these people. Yes, I'm looking into that because I'm looking at the way they're rigging this shit. And Byron Allen, um, I'll give him credit. He does a, he sues a lot of these people for doing that type of shit. When they have these set-asides that's supposed to be for black-owned businesses, but they let all of these white and other minority groups get them, and Byron Allen, he has you know a law firm that he starts suing them for doing that because they don't give that money to black, for real black-owned entities. You think? But I'm telling you, all of these websites where they have black people on them, they're like, oh yeah, racial justice after George Floyd, we got we committed to racial justice. That money does not go to us, man. That money does not go to us, and they trick it up with little grading systems called CEI. I broke that down before. They got what's called the CEI grading system, and that's a trick bag that they put in there by the LGBT community. 
You see, if you don't know the ins and outs of it, you don't know that it's an LGBT program where certain businesses and certain nonprofits, you can't get any earmarked funding if your CEI score is low. And your CEI score is low depending upon, is low or high depending on, on how many LGBT, LGBT people you have working for your organization and how many programs and entities you set aside for the LGBT community. It's damn near mandatory. So if you don't have it, your score is lowered and you get deprioritized for the funding. Yeah? Man. It's heavy. Yeah, the Corporate Equality Index. Now that sounds, you know, that sounds like some type of um, um, fair score about justice. They have, it's called the Corporate Equality Index. Now that sounds like something that's fair. It ain't fair. That's all about how many LGBT people that you're going to cater to. Nothing for us. Literally nothing for us. Yeah? Yeah, that's a form of damn discrimination. And they kind of word it like that so it doesn't look like discrimination. See, words matter. That's 100% discrimination. Uh, not just against black folks, but just against heterosexual businesses. But they word it a certain way so it doesn't look like it's prioritizing the white LGBT community. You yeah. think? So instead of saying you got to hire or prioritize LGBT people, they're like, no, you got to really raise your corporate equality um, index score. So how do I raise it? By hiring gay people. Ain't that discrimination? No, 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 no. This is the corporate equality equity index. No, no discrimination at all. So what's a con game, man? It's insane. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's why they get, they get these stud mammies out here. Oh yeah, they kill two birds with one stone. That's why they get they love getting an, a black LGBT front person. You dig? If they get a black LGBT front person who's loud and proud and just real flamboyant and goes out there and toes the line, oh, that raises up that, that corporate equity score. That raises that score up so they kill two birds with one stone. Yeah? Man. Oh, that's a major con game, dude. And I'm telling you, man, we fill out these grants and there's billions of dollars laying around for museums. Museums are supposed to just get money thrown at us. But when you are a black museum and you don't have any LGBT people on your, LGBT people on your board of directors, they're like, oops, ah, ah. Yeah. Man. And um, speaking of equality, Shout out to our brother Dion Sanders. Shout out to Dion Sanders for making things pop off in Colorado. Dion Sanders, our brother is doing his thing. Very proud of Dion. Dion told him like, "Hey man, I'm gonna make this thing pop off," and he's making it pop off. And Dion is out there winning. And boy, these folks are acting. They they like it. Let me tell you something. They like the notoriety. Dion Sanders making college football really pop off, making Colorado really the new epicenter for college football. Deion Sanders is making college football pop off. Everybody's like on it now. There ain't been this type of momentum for college football in a minute. He is the talk of college football. I know they got a game coming out here at um, – they're going to go at UCLA. I can't wait till the tickets go on sale. I want to go. So our brother Dion is doing his thing. And, you know, the, the sports people, you know, they like all of the, the
the ads and the attention and the money he's bringing in, but there's some salty stuff going on. There's some real passive aggressive energy. Yeah, he's showing that black excellent. Let's, let's be real. Some of these folks are triggered. You know, they can kind of fake through the smiles as much as they can, but some of these folks are triggered and then they get their coons to do the dirty work for them. They had this one guy talking about he's Dion now. Hold on, let me play some of this stuff. Hold on. Let me show some of this stuff. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Man, man, man. Hold on, let me show some of this stuff. So this is um, them on one of these sports shows. This dude talking about he's all, he's dion out. Hold on. I'm a, he, he said he's going to be rooting for Nebraska. Hold on. For college football. I'll tell you right now, I will root like crazy for Nebraska on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Oh my Didn't God. Didn't your kid go to Nebraska? Uh, oh, no. Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. 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 You're, you're unbelievable. Laugh, you're Paul. Unbelievable. That was funny. You're laugh, unbelievable. Laugh over there. Uh, listen, he's a breath of fresh air. I thought it was a great hire when Colorado made the move. They were a disastrous program. His kid, it's a good story. He brings the, uh, the other Travis Hunter in, plays both ways. He gets him to go from Florida State to, to Jackson State, and then he goes out to uh, Boulder. Uh, they have USC at home which would be interesting. That's later on. They have USC going to their place. But I'm a little beyond out already. So I know they play Nebraska this weekend. And I... He's Dion out. The hell does that mean? What does I'm Dion out mean? That means I, I hate to see all that black excellence. Oh, I hate to see that black excellence. Oh, I'm so Dion out. Oh, yeah, and Jason Whitlock, oh, gosh, do we? I even need to go there? And let me say this about Jason Whitlock's fat ass. Jason Whitlock is, is doing the dirty work for the white supremacists. So whenever you see him talking greasy, understand it's his white paymasters. That's how they feel. And they just push him out there to do the dirty work for them. He's the designated coon, and he goes out here and does the dirty work for them. All right, so this is the, the white media pushing out their juicy coon, Jason Whitlock, to demonize Deion Sanders. This is what the white people want to say, but they can't say it, so they'll get him to say it. So this is Jason Whitlock talking about Deion and Deion winning, and he's up here talking about how Deion needs to be humble now. Hold on. Deion Sanders believe in Deion Sanders? He's certainly not acting like a believer in himself the Colorado Buffaloes, or the God he proclaims when he occasionally takes a break from self-promotion. Prime time behaved like an insecure 29-year-old woman trying to convince herself that streaming reality TV shows, cooking shashuka, and getting drunk at a Beyonce concert beats marriage and kids. Yeah, I went there. It's 10.45 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm 29 and single, and I don't have kids yet. Here's what your Saturday splits want to bed. Kids, and you're not being where society... Okay, okay, I don't know what that is. Okay, so Jason Woodlock's fat ass is up here hating on Dion. And remember, that's the white media, the white people up there who's paying him they're writing that stuff for him to say. That's them talking like that. That's them demonizing because they know they can't say it. They got to get the big juicy coon to say it. You know? And, you know, it's, it's that, well, Dion is a little uppity. Yeah, he can't even read the script. That's clearly a script. He's clearly reading a script that they're giving him, and he can't even read the script properly. All right, so that's just Jason Whitlock is the big old juicy coon doing what big juicy coons do, all right? But it's the white people, his paymasters, that's putting him out there to do it, all right? Just understand that, that oh, yeah, Dion's supposed to be humble. Yeah, see, if he was losing, oh, step it up, but he's winning. Well, why don't you be more humble? They, they always reserve that for us. When we're winning, we're never supposed to celebrate. That's that Jack Johnson stuff. When you win, 
when Jack Johnson was knocking them white boxers out. Hey, Jack, don't go, don't be smiling now. If you knock them out and win, don't stand up there smiling because we're going to look at you as an uppity Negro. They used to tell Jack Johnson that. When you knock them out, don't smile because that's going to look like you're gloating. Be humble, Negro. That's why they had to bring Jack Johnson down a peg. He was flossing too much. He got too much money. You're driving around in these new cars and banging our white women. Oh, God, we got to put this Negro in jail. They created a law just for Jack Johnson and black people. The white slave trafficking law, the Man Act, they created that for Jack Johnson to stop him from traveling around the country with white women, saying if you take a woman uh, across state lines for moral purposes, then you're violating the Man Act. Yeah? They told Jack Johnson that too. Somebody said, Joe Lewis, no, they told Jack Johnson that too. I believe they told Joe Lewis that too. Yeah, they told Jack Johnson that too. And truth be told, they wanted Muhammad Ali to be humble. That's why Muhammad Ali was so great. Muhammad Ali's like, I ain't about to be humble. I'm the greatest. Muhammad Ali was one of the first ones to say, hell no. I ain't about to sit here and beat my opponent and then be humble to appease the white supremacists. No, I'm the greatest. That's why Muhammad Ali, he had the backing of Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, and he could get away with that. They couldn't pull that shit on Ali that they did with Jack Johnson and Joe Lewis. See, they humbled Joe Lewis. You know, they kind of took his money and all of that, and they put Jack Johnson in jail. So you, they would do stuff to those brothers. Ali got with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, so Ali had the backing of the Nation of Islam. And you better understand, in the 1960s, the Nation of Islam was not no damn joke. When Elijah Muhammad was here, the Nation of Islam was nothing to damn play with. They couldn't pull those little janky moves on our brother. Plus, Ali was rolling with Malcolm early on, too. And Ali had the backing of the black community. We rolled with Ali heavy. The black community had the had Ali's back along with the Nation of Islam. That's why the mafia couldn't get Ali to take a dive. You see? The mafia at the time, remember the mafia was controlling boxing for a long time. The boxing control mafia the, 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 the mafia controlled boxing for a long time. So they would go say, they go to a black boxer and tell him, hey man, we're gonna bet a gazillion dollars on this white fighter. Nigga, you better take a dive or we're gonna break your legs. I think they tried to holler at Ali about that, and then Elijah Muhammad hollered at the mafia, like, hey, you know where we live and we know where you live. So what you wanna do? You, you understand? Elijah Muhammad let the mafia know, hey. The, the bullshit can go both ways. You really don't want to play that game with us. Yeah? Yeah, we, we got these, these the fruit of Islam over here who's very well trained to put in some work. You're not going to play that intimidation game on us. Yeah, you got knees too. You, you want to break knees? Y'all got knees too, and they can be broken. Yeah. So they've always had this thing where they want to, if we win, we got to be humble. No, they don't, because they know we walk into our greatness, man. That inspires other black people. They don't want us to inspire other black people. Oh, yes, yeah, that's why they hate um, our brother Floyd Mayweather today. I love Floyd Mayweather. And that's why Floyd has a winning team. Al Heyman and those guys. Shout out to Floyd. Love Floyd. Yeah, but these people always have this thing about us being in our place. They remember what they said about black coaches. They never, they didn't want black people getting into coaching. See, this thing what Dion is doing, they like the money, they like the notoriety, but this is a fear that they've had that black folks, we start getting into coaching and taking it over. Because they've always had this thing, well, the black coaches are just not as smart as the white coaches and whoop de whoop They've been running with that narrative. Now that we got Dion out here showing and proving, you know, that gets contagious. They don't want that 
us to get into the coaching thing heavy. You understand? Because the white supremacists, they're like, well, shit, that's all we got. Ownership and the coaching gigs. Remember what Jimmy the Greek said back in the day? Let me play, let me replay Jimmy the Greek. You know, when he got in trouble talking about the big black bucks and all of that stuff, that he said something else about black coaches that a lot of people forgot. This is Jimmy the Greek. I think this is back in the 80s, and he got in trouble by saying this. He he said what they talk about behind closed doors. The, he got in trouble because he said it openly. They talk like this behind closed doors all the time. Jimmy the Greek just got in trouble because he said it openly. But listen to this. This is how they feel about black coaches. This is from the 80s. Well, they've got everything. If, if they take over coaching like everybody wants them to, there's not going to be anything left for the white people. I mean, all the players are black. I mean, the only thing that the whites control is the coaching jobs. Now, I'm not being derogatory about it, but that's all that's left for them. So black talent is beautiful. It's great. It's out there. It's, you know, the, the only thing left for the whites is a, a couple coaching jobs. Yeah, maybe we need to get more black coaches. Oh, it's all right with me. Okay, well, I'm sure that they'll take over that pretty soon, too. Well, they've got everything... There it is. Yeah, Jimmy the Greek felt comfortable saying that openly. He got a little drunk. But that's what they talk about behind closed doors. That's what they talk about behind closed doors, fam. Yeah? That's what they talk about behind closed doors. But yeah, it's, it's heavy. You know, with sports figures. And I was talking about uh, Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Speaking of Malcolm X, speaking of Malcolm, we're in here heavy. Shout out to everybody in here. There was a tether girl denigrating, excuse me, denigrating Malcolm X. Excuse me. There's this tether girl. And there's this thing with these tethers who get on social media. They try to denigrate our foundation of black American icon. There's this thing where they like to do that. Now, I really don't respect when they do that. But, yeah, this woman got on Twitter, a, a TikTok, talking about Malcolm X was misogynistic. And this is a thing with the tethers. And I'm not going to play all the videos. But these tethers love getting on TikTok, denigrating our foundation of black American icons. They like, there was one chick on there talking about how... Um, Dr. Martin Luther King is misogynistic and trans and homophobic. You know, they get on here and start saying anything. Hold on. Hold on one second. Wait, I want to find where that woman said that. Okay, I think this is it here. Okay. Okay, right here. okay, okay. So let me play a couple of these things from these damn mammies and... and tethers all right so this one woman here is talking about she's reading malcolm x's autobiography and there's a passage in there when he was still detroit red he had to his homeboy's girlfriend he had to subdue her from attacking him hold on i'm working on a video essay about a gendered reading of this book because the way that women show up mm. and by the way this woman here is from sierra leone sierra leone him and Sammy, his partner in crime, just got out of a hot robbery. Sammy's almost shot and killed, and his girlfriend is really fucking pissed about it. And she went for me, him, screaming and clawing. She knew I'd been in on it with him. I fended her off, not being able to figure out why Sammy didn't shut her up. I did. And from Now, what she just read in the autobiography of Malcolm X, somebody, this woman was attacking Malcolm, and Malcolm kind of smacked her up to, to fend her off. So he was defending himself from this, his, his homeboy's lady for running up on him. On the corner of my eye, I saw Sammy going for his gun. Sammy's reaction that way to my hitting his woman, close as he and I were, was the only weak spot I'd ever glimpsed. So, two things. One, Malcolm X thinks worse of his partner for going to be violent towards him in defense of the black woman he just hit, that he thought he had impunity to hit because... And the so-called black woman was a... In the book, she's described as a Spanish Negro. So it might have been a Puerto Rican chick, but in the book, the woman is described as a Spanish Negro, something like that. They were that close, and he, she was in hysterics. And secondly, I'm supposed to excuse this to follow his leadership. 
Okay. Now, this tether bed wench is up here cherry picking stuff. Yeah, with the dot with the raggedy divestment bunny ruckus wig. I don't I, I despise these people trying to cosplay as foundation of black Americans, trying to clout chase on our icons. This dude this is Malcolm X was talking about when he was in the streets, he was a different person when he transformed into Malcolm X under the tutelage of Elijah Muhammad, he became a different person and you know his disposition was different. But these people who come from these places where abuse of women is rampant, they don't talk about that. They come over here and try to demonize our icons. And this is the same woman right here with another tether woman up here talking about MLK being homophobic. Hold on. Hold on. The hate is queerness. Did you know that? Did you know that Malcolm X has a... And Dr. King is homophobic! Wait, wait. Oh, this is nothing. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. The same people that taught Malcolm X to hate his queerness. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is another thing, too. They go around talking about this, this whole narrative that Malcolm X was an undercover queer, a homosexual. Which isn't true. They've been telling that lie since the early 90s. There's a white man named Bruce something came up with these lies in his book years ago, which has been debunked. This, they got this from Zaddy. A white man said this in a book years ago, which is lies, that Malcolm X was up here turning tricks for white men, which is a damn lie. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. All right. And then there was another Negro... Um, Maraby, they were going to have him, they had to get a front Negro to tell the lies for them so that Marable guy, he was going to come up with a book. Then he died right before the book came out. The root work got his ass before he put the lies out. Right before the book came out, this nigga died. The ancestors got him. Yeah, Bruce Perry, that's the white man. Bruce Perry started spreading those lies in the, was it early 90s, right? So yeah, they've been, look, if Malcolm was out here messing with some dudes, the FBI would have put that out in the 60s, all right? The FBI would have put that out in the damn 60s. Manning Marable, right. So yeah, that old, that slander of our icons, they try it all the time. But yeah, then this woman here pops up with um, Martin Luther King was homophobic. Hold on. Did you know that? Did you know that Malcolm X has a... And Dr. King is homophobic! Wait, let's run out of it. So in the video, she talks about how Malcolm X is queer. And it got me thinking to how people will compare Malcolm X and Dr. King when Dr. King is literally homophobic. It's apples and oranges. During the civil rights movement, Bayard Rustin and Dr. King was hand in hand. They organized boycotts, protests, started organizations. Bayard even did the march on Washington, okay? And because of that success, Bayard said, let's include LGBTQ in the fight for equality. Dr. King cut off all communication and never did anything with the man again. And when asked, Dr. King said they had a difference of opinion. You cannot be pro-black and homophobic or transphobic or any of that shit because that means that you feel like only some people deserve equality. Fuck out of here! Boy, these tethers who try to cosplay as us are so damn corny. Corny ass clowns who denigrate our icons. Rustin was a damn agent, and they knew he was. Rustin, Bayard Rustin was, a, was an asset for the CIA and the damn FBI, all right? It is propaganda. Bayard Rustin was a damn asset for them folks, you yeah? know? Shout out to our brother, that, that Malcolm X BS, our brother, um, Dr. Wesley Muhammad debunked all that stuff. Yeah, shout out to Brother Wesley Muhammad. But yeah, these folks, man, these people go out of their way to denigrate our icons because they don't really have any from their cultures. Let me go there. I hate to go there. Because these people come from places, and I, I, I'm not being mean-spirited, they don't have any iconic heroes in their culture. I'm not disrespecting Sierra Leone, but who's the hero of Sierra Leone? 
No disrespect to y'all, man. But these folks ain't got no heroic icons. You don't have any, for the most part. So because you ain't got none, and then you flee from your homeland, you come here and try to denigrate our world-renowned icons. You dig? You like it? We ain't got no icons. We gonna throw rocks at yours. That's why any black person who's an activist who fights for justice, you know, such as myself, we're always attacked by tethers. The people who attack us the most, tethers. They're always attacking us. They don't have any activists in their homeland. They have fleers, people trying to get the hell out. Nobody's fighting for no kind of justice. Everybody's just fighting to get the hell out of there. So they don't have any type of activism in their homeland. It's all about who's the fastest person to the damn immigration office. So there's uh, Mandela, shout out to Mandela. Mandela was a thing because of us. We were the ones propping up Mandela. Let's get that shit straight. We over here, we were the ones making the block hot for the white people over there in South Africa. We were the ones beating that drum, the black grassroots and the black media over here. We were the ones standing up saying, hey, to the international community, hey, y'all got to do something about what they're doing to the brothers in South Africa. That's not cool. You have brothers like Stevie Wonder, so many black people over here using their notoriety, 70s and the 80s, going to Washington making protests, making a stand, saying, hey, we're gonna, we're not gonna play at some of those venues over there if you're gonna demonize the black folks there. Remember in the 70s, going back in the 70s, we had our brother Gil Scott Heron, people like that, with songs like Johannesburg. Remember? 1976, I think. What's the word, Johannesburg? What's the word, Johannesburg? That was us over here doing that. Yeah. We were beating that drum. We were pushing for justice for them heavy. You understand that? Let's get that very clear. So, and yeah, we respected Mandela. We respected Winnie. We loved what she was doing. We were big supporters, just like we are supporting Julius Malema. We love Malema. We're big supporters of Julius Malema over here. We are in solidarity with our brother Julius Malema. Standing up for the people there. Yeah? So, yeah, we always stand up for justice. But in, in a lot of those other countries, they don't have any activists like that. Yeah? Yeah? And James Baldwin, he was all about what was best for the black community. James Baldwin wasn't talking about no LGBT rights. James Baldwin was talking about white society making things right for black society. James Baldwin was a writer for black society. I hate when they try to get an icon and because of his sexuality, they try to say, okay, well, it was all about LGBT rights. No, it wasn't. They tell the same lie with our sister Ida B. Wells talking about she was a feminist. Ida B. Wells was not a feminist in any sense of the damn word. Our queen mother, Ida B. Wells, was a writer for the black community. She wasn't on no feminist bullshit. She, in fact, didn't like them white feminists. The white feminists was trying to finesse her. They were trying to run a game on her. She was like, look, y'all need to help me do something about the lynchings that your men are doing to our black men. The fuck y'all hoes talking about? Ida B. Wells was checking them white feminists. So they'll try to low-key act like, well, yeah, we had um, black women feminists like Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells wasn't rocking with y'all like that. Ida B. Wells was calling you out. Ida B. Wells was a writer for the black community. See, we, we can't let them tell the story. They'll rewrite the story on us. Ida B. Wells was walking around with a pistol. They better tell the whole story about Ida B. Wells. That's one of my idols. We have some stuff on her at the museum at the in here in LA. Nigga, Ida B. Wells whooped some white folks' asses on a train. They tried to make her get into a the, the Jim Crow cart 
after she purchased a she purchased a first class ticket. They wanted her to go back in in a a, a second class cart, and then they tried to physically grab her. She started whooping ass. They had to physically throw her off the train. And but again, James Baldwin was a rider. James Baldwin. We got a lot of folks in here. Shout out to all the people in here. But yeah, man, a lot of these folks, man, we, our brothers and sisters who are non-FBA, man, if you are riders, we ride with you. If you are a rider, we ride with you. But the tether class who sit up here scamming, scheming, lying, trying to demonize our icons, demonize the activists, that's not going to work. And that brings us to No Jumper. Shout out to No Jumper. Now, I was just, I just did another interview with No Jumper. I've been on No Jumper several times. They've been very respectful to me. I just did an interview with them a week or so ago. It's going to come out pretty soon. Me and Flacco, great interview. We chop up some good game. Now, they had a show on Adam's show up there a few days ago. Now, they mentioned me on there. They had some, some Nigerian tether on there, lying. And they were saying some, I, I, I don't respect lies. Let me play what they were talking about. They were up here lying on me and lying on Foundation of Black Americans. No, y'all can't do that. I, I don't like that because y'all y'all got to say that stuff to me when I'm there. Say all that stuff to me when I'm there because I'm up there. I have no problem going up there. Y'all don't wait till I'm not there and then y'all got people up here talking, saying shit that ain't real. Where's this thing? Hold on. So this is on No Jumper. It was some old weird ass straw man lies dude is telling. Now look at this. Hold on. Hold on. Now listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. Are we good? Hold on. How's my reception here? Okay, there we go. Making sure my reception. My reception is acting janky. Hold on. Okay, my reception good, guys. Am I alright? All right. Now look, listen to this. Hold on, hold on. They put you onto the FBA stuff. It's very interesting. Who, did, who put you Because well, I interviewed Tariq, and he's just blaming okay. everything you could possibly talk about. He just blames it on the non-FBAs. Yeah. He's like, and well, what's yeah. FBA? What's the foundational what's the black American? So okay. basically, someone who came from slavery. They 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 think Africans are here, oh, like taking that's... their jobs and, mm -hmm. and okay, 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 okay. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. I don't blame everything on non-FBAs. I don't let them blame their stuff on us. I don't let non-FBA people do weird stuff and then blame it on us. I don't blame everything on them. If they do some shit that's weird, you hold your own nuts. Don't blame it on us. I do not let nobody blame their bullshit on us because you don't let your victories fall on us. Don't let your failures fall on us. That's what I'm saying. Don't let your failures fall on us. All right? Also, yeah, these FBAs, they mad because they, they feel like we taking their jobs. What jobs are you taking? That's a damn lie. They got that, on, they got that lie about me on Wikipedia, which is a damn lie, that... I feel like, and other foundationals feel like, African immigrants are taking our jobs. I ain't never said no shit like that. I have never, ever, ever said that. That is a bald-faced lie. I have never, ever said, I fear that African immigrants are taking our jobs. What jobs are you taking? What jobs? That's a lie y'all came up with. What jobs are you taking? Y'all can never explain it. You just tell the lie and then run. What lie? What jobs are you taking? I ain't never said no shit like that because y'all can't tell me what jobs. Uber? What jobs are you taking from us? That's a fantasy that you guys then came up with. That's y'all asses saying that lie. They even got that. They I, they got that lie about me on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia, I'm gonna go to the Wikipedia. Wikipedia is so unreliable. 
because Wikipedia is run by straight up white supremacists. They got white supremacist editors there. Hold on one second. Let's go to the Wikipedia page. Um, and they got it now. They only, Wikipedia is supposed to be edited by, you know, the, the public, but they only special editors can edit the Wikipedia page of mine. My page is made so that only special editors there at Wikipedia can edit it. So this is a propaganda piece. Um, Tariq Nasheed, he's best, his promotion of conspiracy theories. In 1991, Tariq moved to Los Angeles. That's a lie. I've been in LA since the 80s. That's a, that's a lie. All of this shit is inaccurate. They got so much inaccurate information. Uh, what else they got? Um, da, 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 what else they got? Um, Tariq took issue with an LGBT sandwich. Okay, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. Um, where is this? Tariq has voiced opposition to immigrants arguing they make getting reparations for African Americans more difficult and they allegedly take jobs and other opportunities away. I ain't never said that shit. I have never, ever, ever said that. That is a damn lie. Also here, he married Peanut, Alexis Peanut Cobb, they have three children and a daughter from a previous previous marriage. I've only been married once. So this is, I'm telling you, these folks have just put up lies. I ain't been married before. I've only had one wife. That's Peanut, Lexi. I've never been married before besides my marriage now. So we done pointed out several lies these people have told. I've never been married before. I've only had one wife. They just put up some bullshit from any source. They're so unreliable. But let me finish playing the, the um, oh, Wikipedia is a damn joke. But let me play the rest of um, Adam and those guys. Hold on. Let me play the rest of this dude here talking about some damn jobs we're afraid they're taking. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Foundational black American, so okay. basically someone who came from slavery. They they, they think Africans are here, oh, like taking their jobs, and, mm -hmm. and it's like, bro, well, this, this is America. This, this is a, this a white part. man's country, man. We don't got no power. And they resent like, that, like, you know? in Harvard, a person from Nigeria who just came over counts as a black person the same way that a, a person who's been in America for a couple hundred years, their family lineage, so counts as a black person. person. What? Adam, what the hell was that? <laughs> what? We resent that a black person from Nigeria who goes to Harvard counts it. What, what was Adam? Adam, you need to call me. What the hell was that? When did any of us say that? When the hell did any of us say anything remotely close to that? We resent some African who goes to Harvard who's classified. No, we don't. No, we don't. There's this whole thing that, yeah, they want to pretend that we're jealous of something. No, we, we don't resent nobody African going to know Harvard. What is that? I don't even know what that lie means. That's a weird-ass lie. What the hell does that mean, man? Where did you get that from, brother? What kind of lie is that? That don't even make sense, man. And we resent them for being uh, claiming black some African who goes to Harvard what the hell was that all right let me let me play some more let me play some more damn brother all right hold on person who's been in America for a couple hundred years their family lineage so counts it, as it, a it, black but person. it's not the Nigerian you got to tell the white man to change that because right. the Nigerian can't change. The Nigerian that's coming here don't have the power to dictate that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's the white, that you got to go to the white man and say, yo, separate us. We're going to be black and call them Africans. Don't put us together black slash African. Mm. The African can't do that. So True. it's like you mad at the wrong person. What, what kind of straw? They done made up a straw man argument. And they're arguing against their own bullshit straw man argument. What the hell is that? 
and we got to go to the white man and have him name us? No, we don't. Y'all got y'all got to go to the white man and ask him to change your name. No, we don't. No, we're self-identifying. Yo, y'all got to go to the white man. Nigga, what are you talking about? No, we don't. We don't have to go to nobody. We have self-identified ourselves. That's the first step of power. When you identify yourself, you self-identify and say, hey, I don't give a damn what you say. We're calling ourselves this. This is who we are. This is who we are. That's the sign of power because that gets everybody on code. Yeah? We've identified ourselves, what our lineage is, what we should call ourselves, who's who, and what our culture is. That's power. Anyway, let me play the rest. Let me play the rest. All right. All right. Man. Okay. Hold on. Separate us. We're going to be black and call them Africans. Don't put us together black slash African. Mm -hmm. The African can't do that. So True. it's like you mad at the wrong person. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and, and that's, but, but to read, he's, he'd be hustling. That's, that's his whole thing, you know? It's like he. Projection, projection. They love, he'd be hustling. That's a tether projection. That's what y'all do. Scam and hustle. That's a projection. He push hate and he make money from that. You know what I'm saying? I, tether projections. Like, I'm not going to say the dude is not trying to build something, right. but he found like, uh, like a niche, like people who are just mad at Africans. Mad at you for what? And he just antagonized them, and it's like, yo, let's let's go with these people, you know. And yeah, I like the guy, but the way that he just con consistently just goes back to everything being a non-FBA thing is kind of like unreal. Because we're not letting nobody dump garbage on us. We're not letting nobody dump garbage on us. He pushed hate. That's a projection. You guys are the ones whose parents tell you when you get over there, stay away from them. Stay away from the Akata. That's your family who does that. That's y'all come over here and create these little old segregated enclaves where you circulate your little money among yourselves. You dig? That's y'all who do that. That's you. That's y'all who got all these weird names for us over there. You understand? We're saying people are no longer going to dump their trash. You're not going to come over here and get all of the black benefits and then say, oh, let me distance myself from y'all. Uh, but if there's a Juneteenth program, let me sign up for some Juneteenth scholarship money or a Juneteenth grant. I'll be first in line for that. But everything, oh, let me stay away, let me stay away until y'all got some money. Hey, I'm black just like you. So no, because y'all don't let us touch none of your shit. We don't touch none of your wins. If you have a win, well, you gatekeep that. Well, y'all draw a big gate around us. Nigeria stand up. Jamaica stand up. Haiti stand up. You niggas sit back. When our brother Michael B. Jordan tried to use the name Gervais for a damn liquor um, um, brand, they jumped out the woodworks. Hey, y'all FBA niggas stay away from our culture. Stay away from Trinidad culture. That's our culture. Don't you be naming your stuff using our names. Y'all quick to gatekeep your stuff and don't let us make a dime off of it. If we make a dime off of it, oh, y'all cry foul. Yeah, even with Beyonce. When Beyonce was over there getting African dancers, who is this Akata gal? Who is this gal? She thinks she's the queen of Africa. Who, who is this gal? You think? A real funny style, but then y'all want to eat off our culture, and then your your riff raffs, you want to dump your riff raffs all on us, and we're saying no. If you want to keep all of your wins, keep your losses too. If you want to keep your wins, keep your losses just like that. Keep the same energy. We don't want to absorb your wins. Take the scamming Somalian girl with you. Take all the non-FBA scammers and riff raffs with you. We don't want them dumped on us. You damn right I don't want them dumped on us. 
You damn right. Shout out to this sister here on Twitter. She made a video talking about how these folks are so damn the tethered class is obsessed with us. Talking about we ain't supposed to be around. Well, damn it, don't be around us. Shout out to this sister here speaking truth to power. Original black Americans, that's that sister. She's speaking real stuff. Hold on. Hey, y'all, I want to post this. I want to show you how these other groups are so obsessed with us. This guy, racist, doesn't sound like very well educated. He says, keep telling yourself that. One of the first things people are told when coming to America is to avoid blacks in their neighborhoods. We don't give a fuck. We wish you all would try to avoid us. I wish you would avoid me right now. But you're on my post harassing and obsessing on my post. Trust me, original black Americans wish people would leave us alone. We wish you guys would stop talking about us. We wish you would stop obsessing about us. We wish you would stop coming to our neighborhoods. And we wish you, you people would get out of our business. You guys are obsessed with us. Like all cultures and ethnicities obsessed with talking about us, obsessed with harassing us, obsessed with telling us how nobody wants to, to talk to us. But yet here you are on my page. Please avoid us. Please don't come to our neighborhoods. Please don't come to, please tell your friends. Tell her. Boom. Did, uh, did you see a lie? I didn't. I didn't see no lie. Huh? Yeah, for all of those people talking about, yeah, we're supposed to avoid y'all. Well, shit, get to avoiding them. Shit, we don't, you're not benefiting us. All of that, we're supposed to avoid you. Well, then get to avoiding. Why the hell are y'all all whining in our mentions all damn day? I thought y'all were supposed to be avoiding us. Every time we do a live, y'all calling up. I thought you were supposed to be avoiding us. Damn. All of that, we got to avoid. No, no. It's all about what we're supposed to do. Get the resources for th from them that they fight for and then move it over here. If y'all supposed to be avoiding us, how come y'all ain't in them Pan-African spaces? How come them Pan-African channels ain't got no damn views unless they mention us? Notice none of the Pan-African channels got no views unless they mention us. They got to keep our names in their damn mouth in order to get a view. Y'all obsessed with Foundation of Black Americans. You can't get anything popping without us. Y'all stay obsessed with us. Go be great somewhere. Go and drive your little Uber. Go handle that. If you got so much greatness and oh, we're spreading so much hate, bye. We ain't losing no sleep. I'm I'm not gonna miss the Joloff plates. I'm not gonna miss them. <laughs> no disrespect. But y'all sitting up here talking about we're supposed to avoid y'all. Well, get to avoid it then. Damn. Stop whining to us all the damn time. That's, that's when you can tell a tether. Those are the, the tether men are the whiniest niggas ever. They love whining to other men because that's what they do in their homeland. In their homeland, because they got corrupt leaders over there, they have to whine to them niggas for, for whatever bread they get. So they're used to just whining to men all the time. That's all they do is whine to niggas. That's, that's one thing I can shout out Foundation of Black American Men. That's one thing that culturally we don't do. We don't be up in a nigga's face whining to him. How come you, how come you didn't give nothing to the community over here? Uh, FBA men don't generally do no shit like that. FBA men usually go out here, niggas out here trying to get it. You ain't whining to no other man. Yeah? But yeah, the fact that we have said, hey, look, some of the, the non-FBA riders, we rock with you. If you rock with us, we rock with you. But the, the, the riffraff, scammy, tether niggas and the, the mammies and the bedwinches, we ain't really rocking with them. And we're going to focus on getting the resources for our ethnic group right now. So now the fact that we're saying, hey, you know what? Y'all do you. Whatever you need for your group, do you. <laughs> what, nigga? Wet, 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 nigga. That's divisive. We're all the same, nigga. But I thought you, you, you're supposed to avoid us. 
we, you're not supposed to be around us, right? I mean, shit, go do you. Oh, no, but wait, 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 nigga. That's the last thing they want is for us to let them fend for themselves. That's the let, because they can't do it. They need us to do the fighting for them. We got to be the muscle. We got to be the, the energy to get stuff done so they can just kind of sit back and eat while we're doing all of the hard work while they're sitting back and getting whatever falls off the tree that we're shaking and they can hoard it somewhere. And look, nigga, look, I pulled up myself by my bootstraps. Stop. Because the idea of us not carrying them, it terrifies them. That's why they stay in our mentions all the time. <laughs> Nigga, we're the same boat that dropped you off in America, dropped me off over here. Shut up. The same boat talk. <laughs> we all come from the motherland. All right, nigga. No, we have a different ethnic group. There's something called an, an ethnogenesis, all right? Where after a while, scientifically, after a certain group has been through a, a certain type of history, there's a new culture that has developed, and that's us. We've had an ethnogenesis. We've become a new ethnic group, okay? And that's fine. See, the thing is, so many people are used to tethering off of our ethnic group. When we tell people, hey, we don't really want you tethering on us. Why don't you take your wins and take them over there? We're going to take all of our wins and kind of count them over here. And then when you start counting the wins, the numbers over there are looking kind of low. Yeah? Because people have been riding on our coattail for a minute. Yeah? So, yeah, we got to understand how the game is out here. Yeah, don't, don't let people run that Israel light and all that, all that uh, stop. No. Yeah? We've been in America. Yes, indeed. We've been in America exactly as long as they've been in all of the Caribbean islands. We've been here just as long. If they are an ethnic group, of course we're an ethnic group. Yeah? Of course we're an ethnic group, and they know that. They only have derogatory names for us. But when we start doing power moves like self-identifying, see, that gets everybody a little nervous because that's the first step of power. When you start naming yourself, yeah, that's the first step of power. Huh? Oh, yeah, when you see a nigga with affairs and all that bullshit and, all, and some of these Hebrew Israelites, we the, we, we Hebrews, we came up, uh, okay. Look, look. And I'm not trying to denigrate y'all because I'm, I'm very close to a lot of the Hebrew Israelite folks. I'm cool with a lot of them. I'm cool with a lot of them. And there's a lot of truth in some of the history. You got some of these um, Hebrew tribes that's in East Africa. Um, the narrative that a bunch of Hebrews were brought here, it, that that's historically is inaccurate. And then niggas start, you know, when you say that, dudes be... Well, hold on, brother. That is not inaccurate because, see, when you go to the book of Leviticus, uh, here we go, uh oh When they start using the Bible as a historic reference, uh-oh, here we go. No, brother Nasheed. Now, listen, brother. First of all, shalom, brother. Um, I agree with a lot of what you say, brother. I agree with a lot, a lot of what you say, and I've bootlegged, I mean, I've, I've supported the Hidden Colors films, and we taught them in the Hebrew Israelite schools, but, brother... What you got to do when you say that there were no, not too many um, Hebrews coming to the Americas, what you're going to have to do is go to the, the book of Numbers. Okay, well, hold on. Let me have my brother read. Read. And the word, see, and the word says, brother, read. The word says that let there be light. See, light was what they had on the slave ships. Read. Let there be light. To cover the darkness. The darkness was the black man who was in Africa. Okay. Uh, God. Yeah. All right, brothers. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I 
Then it gets into that. Then it gets into that. Um, and speaking of that, I know a lot of people are talking about Brother Polite going to jail. Brother Polite is going to jail. And I touched on that a little bit. I don't want to get too deep into it because we're talking about, and I, I don't want to get a strike because you're talking about violation of children and all that. I don't want to get too deep, you know. But yeah, that's horrible. That's horrible. And, you know, Polite, years ago, he was in one of our films years ago, and he's done a lot of stuff on The Breakfast Club and all of that stuff. And um, That's horrible. But, yeah, if you, you did that type of shit, you're going where you're supposed to go, and we got to understand this. So let's, let's open this thing all the way up and we're gonna, with the Brother Polite thing. That's, that's, that's some disgusting stuff when you look at what really went down when you read the paperwork and you guys can look online and see, that's some pretty disgusting stuff. And here's the thing, family, let's, this goes back into what we're talking about. You know, we, Foundation of Black Americans, we see folks and, you know, we, we kind of embrace them. But Brother Polite is non-FBA. He's a non-FBA cat. So, again, this goes into us looking into people's background saying, hey man, can we bring certain people around us without checking their background? We gotta start checking everybody's background. Yes, Polite is a Nigerian dude. It's Nigerian, again, I was cool with Polite, but that type of shit, messing with kids, and I ain't cool with that. And again, that's why we check people's paperwork. That's why we're checking people's paperwork right now. Yeah? Yes, Polite is non-FBA, and you know when I met Polite, we were cool. Everything was cool in the gang, and I was um, in New York filming, and he just kind of happened to be around. And then you're like, we just got on camera with him and just had him speak a couple of words, and we used some of the footage, which was cool. And I met Polite, very cool with me. Everything was cool. He had a hat on. I couldn't see the hairline. I couldn't see the hairline, and then later on, I saw the hat off, and I saw the hairline. Uh oh. Where's that brother from? Uh oh, I didn't know. My brother had a non-FBA hairline. I didn't see the hairline until later. All right. I didn't see the non-FBA hairline until much later. I didn't see it until later. All right. But that's not cool. Huh? That type of stuff ain't cool. This is why we got to check everybody's background. That's why everybody's background has to be checked, family. You understand? That this is why the foundation of Black American movement is all about checking paperwork now. We're checking paperwork, hairlines, everybody, because we, we don't know what's going on here with folks. We just can't trust everybody. You dig? We can't trust everybody. We got to look in the background. We got to see what's going on. Yeah? We got to see what's going on with everybody. Man. Man, man, man. <laughs> but hey, that is what it is. Yeah, we got to check we got to check everybody. This is why now on Everybody's paperwork has to be checked. When, when people come around, I, I, I like to know stuff about them, your family, where you're from. You know, that kind of helps me kind of get an angle to see where people are coming from. This is why it's very important, family. This is why it's so important. Yeah? That's why, because we we've been fooled. We've been fooled. Yeah, somebody said Jay Morrison, and I'm still cool with Jay Morrison, but I did point out Jay Morrison was Dominican Jay for a long time, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. I'm still cool with Jay Morrison and the, the, the Tulsa Fund. I donated money to that. I heard it's in trouble now. I don't know what's going on with it. But again, these backgrounds, we got to check everybody. Yeah. We got to check everybody. Man. Man, man, man. So, 
Shout out to the family. Listen, we got a lot of folks in here. We're in here heavy. We're in here deep. Don't forget, man, we need everybody to give a little something to the Hidden History Museum. The link is right there, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hit that link. If everybody can give a recurring donation, 10 bucks, five bucks, whatever, that's gonna help us out at the Hidden History Museum because we are being targeted and sabotaged right now and that institution is very important uh, for us to keep it going. We really, really need the support of the grassroots to keep that going. Yes, I know everybody wants the root work. More root work is coming. That root work was selling fast as hell. Um, we got different scents coming out. We're actually going to open up a root work store. That's how popular the root work is. We're going to have to open up a store. And we're going to be selling it online still. But yeah, the root work thing was kind of bigger than what we thought it was going to be. It kind of took off heavy. People really, really liked it. They loved it and they started to just re-up on it real heavy. So we're going to, we got different scents coming out. We're re up on the vanilla and the coconut butter scent. We got some more scents coming. We're going to have a store pretty soon. So that's coming, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, I appreciate everybody for getting that root work. You can feel the energy and the power of the root work deodorant. That is coming. Um, we got so much stuff going, but I'm really working hard on this documentary. I'm really working hard to get this documentary ready. You know what I am? I'm looking to possibly have the root work store in Atlanta. Where are my Atlanta people? Because I ain't been kicking it in Atlanta in a minute. Where are my Atlanta people? What would be the best street to have the Root Work store on in Atlanta? Should we have it in Peachtree somewhere? What would be the great, the best area? My Atlanta people. What would be the best area in Atlanta with the most foot traffic to have it? Where are my Atlanta people? Y'all holler at me, Atlanta people. Yeah. The propylene glycol is um, 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 vegetable based. They have vegetable based. It's vegetable based. Now Atlanta's not trash. Atlanta's popping. The Auburn area, Edgewood. You're from Barbados and FBAs don't mess with us? No, nobody said that. We're cool with everybody. Decatur, Five Points. What's the area, man? Talk to me, Atlanta. What would be the best area? The Atlantic Station at the Underground, Little Five Points, Memorial Drive. Talk to me, Atlanta. Um, downtown East Point. N nigga, I know Dad, no. <laughs> Edgewood. Okay, how that mean? Old National, no, no, I want to have it more in the Midtown, more in, no, Old National's too far out. I want it to be closer, somewhere around downtown, somewhere close to downtown where they, I know there's some foot traffic. You know? But holler at me, my Atlanta people holler at me, let's make it, give me some ideas. My Atlanta people holler at me. Auburn area is fine, Edgewood, little five points. Lenox Mall, no. No. Where's my sister in here? My sister Tia Marie in here. Shout out to my baby sis Tia Marie. Where you at, sis? My sister's in here somewhere. What's up, Miss Tia Marie? But yeah, let me know what part of Atlanta would be the best part. We're going to make that happen. We're going to make that happen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that root work, people really like the root work. Um, but anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. It's been real. We had a great conversation tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, more root work is coming on the website. I know a lot of people, I mean, we sold out very quickly. A lot of people are asking for the root work, so it's coming. But for the time being, family, we need everybody to go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Give a small donation, big donation, whatever you can give to um, help us keep the museum going. That's going to be very important. And the new hip-hop documentary, man, we're working hard to get that out to you. That's coming soon, so you guys stay tuned for that. You guys have a 